Hey, I'm Rick Roth from the Ink Kitchen. This is uh, Shop Talks. Welcome. Uh, it's a production of the Ink Kitchen and Impressions. We got all kinds of sponsors, like crazy companies like Los Angeles Apparel. And uh, so, uh, welcome. And I have with me here my friend Dove Charney. Known him for a long time. And uh, I don't care what you read, he's a good guy. And uh, so, um, we're gonna talk about the future of garments, where things are headed. And uh, all right, take it away, brother. Well, nice to be back at the show. I think uh, I was thinking about what's going on. What we're worried about right now is making sure that the sweat pant legs are wide enough because the tight leg is done. It's probably done for, well, it, it could be avant-garde. Whatever's going out is- What am I gonna do with all my tights now? I don't know what you're <laughs> gonna do with your leggings. You'd have to set them aside. But the, the good thing about manufacturing in, in the United States is that you can make some adjustments very quickly, or you can make small adjustments to the specs that nobody notices, but you can start bringing them in. If you look at the Haynes BVT, it was, it's evolved over the last 30, 50 years. They've changed it a number of times. Same thing, we can make small changes too, and the shorter your supply chain cycle, the better. So we can make some changes like that. Also, I think T-shirts are for on the men's side could get shorter. And I think lightweight fabric, heavyweight fabrics are strong right now. We, 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 we ha, you know, we, you could even, we could even drop a new heavyweight shirt. Maybe it's slightly heavier than the six and a half ounce. You do seven, eight and a half, nine and a half ounce. But there's also gonna be an emergence of um, lighter weight shirts as well are gonna come back. And um, ringers and stuff like that. Ringers, yeah. Yeah, I, I developed a ringer the other day for women that I like. So um, last year we were talking about, uh, I think, I don't know if you made the word up or it's Yiddish, but the schleppy look. Where are we yeah, going? Well, what's the schleppy look going? I think it's still going. The schlepper look is still going. But um, I think it's wide pants, but tighter shirts could possibly come in. I'm still wearing size large, but, you know, I, I, I like a larger shirt, but I'm... I'm in my mid-50s, so it's a little different. But at the same time, you know, I, th I do think tighter shirts are gonna come in. We're bringing back some old American apparel styles that were lost in the ozone under the banner Los Angeles apparel, of course. Too bad. But, um... You used to have those women's shirts that, like... They would that's big. Out about we, this our thing. baby rib stuff that we had at American Apparel, we're, like, digging up digging all that stuff up, and it's selling fast. We have very big turnover, like up to 300% on 30 single baby rib, which, you know, Bella copy, they may be coming back with their stuff or I still have their old inventory, who knows? But um, yeah, no, baby rib's gonna be back up. The Raglan, the old American apparel, 4353 is back. It's under 43053 Los Angeles apparel. That's gonna be, we're just fitting it this morning. We made the first 200, the necks weren't quite right, but we're gonna fix them. But the, you know, the, all of the, the Raglins, the 43077 is already back. So a lot of stuff is coming back in. Of course, it's a little different. Yeah, I used to think it's an exact recycle, but there's changes when right, it comes back. So what's back. the, well, I always were interested in that. What's the twist this time? I think, hmm. I'm not sure. I think we like we went. It, it you know it could be the length of the shirt. I remember on the old four three Color, colors maybe what mm, different colors? Yeah, some of the colors could be different. Whatever, but a lot of the same. A lot of stuff cycles back, but you just make small you know changes to it. But yeah, definitely rib tees for uh, baby rib tees for women are going to be super strong. I have a few tricks up my sleeve that I might introduce. Um, might do uh, we might do like a, 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 a Supima mercerized kind of crazy thing for you know t-shirt for men but I haven't I have samples but I haven't come up with it yet but you, you know I, I think it there's gonna be there's room for a lot of innovation in the industry and certainly starting Los Angeles apparel from a flat zero about seven years ago we've carved a niche uh, doing new things and putting out new ideas.
and we've inspired a lot of competition, which is natural and normal in the apparel industry. There's nothing you can do of that except um, celebrate when, when people copy you rather than worry about it. But on to the next thing, right? Or you just keep going. You, I mean, people copied the 2001 American Apparel. It's, it's still influential in here. I don't know why people are still wearing it, but it's going. It's so bad, it's ready for a comeback. <laughs> Uh, but so what's out? What 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 that was selling maybe in the last few years is like dies. The They're worst out. thing ever is maybe slub yarns. Slub yarns are out. <laughs> um, I don't know. Slub yarns. I think we're in an open-minded period, though. If you look, it's not where the, the, there's so many different trends that you can go in different directions. It's less. Um, which is more creative, yeah? Yeah, I think it's not like, oh my God, you, but I definitely think tight leg pants for men is a bit of a faux pas. If the, if the leg is too tight on an imprintable garment, you know, we, we measure legs, leg openings, and anything less than 10 or 11 is not the next thing. You know, so when we met, like our old sweatpants are, are naturally narrow, narrower. But we slowly, each season, brought them out three-eighths of an inch on the flat or whatever, little by little. You wouldn't notice it unless you looked at a very old garment. But They're very substantial. I was going to pack mine, but I would have had like a bag just for the sweatpants. <laughs> they're heavy. Yeah, it's true. They're, they're, that, that's, well, that's the manifestation also of onshore manufacturing on the sweatshirt side. The, the, the benefit of importation declines with heavier fleece because it doesn't pack out well in the container. Your, the, yeah, your zip hoodies are super heavy too, yeah. right? I don't know how we, many ounces. We're, we're coming out possibly, uh, this is a sample, but with a 16, 16 ounce fleece instead of 14. And it will be, um, it, we're gonna call it plush fleece. I just, sometimes I don't have the courage to come out with stuff and I'll tell you why, because it might not be perfect. And once you come out with it in the imprintable t-shirt industry, you're kind of stuck with it. Like, there's things I would have done differently. I don't know if on the 1801, I have a, those of you that know my garment, it has a cover stitch neck. I don't know if I would have had the top stitch, but it's too late. We made millions of them like that, so it would be really hard to drop the top stitch. But you could do um, a recall. <laughs> that, would, that would be a recall to the bankruptcy court. Let's go. Um, <laughs> been there, done that. Right. Don't want to do that again. Um, but uh, yeah, things that I think were a lot of new trends coming in. And, and um, what do you like, like, you know, personally even of like new stuff? Because there's so many different styles. Well, like this jacket is what's the Badger jacket company that made this jacket? Because this is a copy of that. Oh, I don't know. Badger, uh, maybe? Who, who remembers? Sorry? Uh, an Augusta one or which one else? Sorry? Cardinal. Car Cardinal could be Cardinal. There's a few of them. But I made this one a little shorter because I noticed they were all longer. So I think shorter lengths are going to play a little bit, you know. And I think there's a lot of money for higher priced and printable as well. Like, I don't think people care. This, I think there's room for $50 wholesale ho case price hoodies. Because some people will say, you know, for my organization, that's what we, we want. The, we want a, a hoodie that feels like a $250 hoodie. I think there's price, there's price, there's price, there's room for high prices in the industry. People want what they want. Right. They do, the $1.75 t-shirt doesn't really rule the world on, yeah, sometimes it does, but I think there's room for higher priced and printable products. I could be wrong, but that's what I'm seeing. Hopefully you're not. Yeah. All right. So uh, who has any thoughts of what they think is going on? Yeah, or questions. Because I don't know. Go, you. Wait, we got a mic for you here. I think uh, the short, boxy crops, as you said, I think that's coming back in. One thing I think material-wise that's coming in or back into say, um, on top of the baby rib and on top of everything you said was was corduroy. 
So uh, we talked earlier, I think uh, you said, what would you like to see more? I think some corduroy pieces by LA Apparel could be, could be pretty cool. But how would you embellish them? You could embroider them, or if you print, they would be like yeah, it's really printing just, on yeah, chips a little bit. I mean, it's a good yeah. idea. We're sp- we, we, we experiment in a lot of different ways. Um, we have a Depop. We're the number one Depopper in the world. We Depop a lot of our damages. Those of you know what that is, it's a little, it says social media. Um, it's a social media site where you could sell anything you know, uh, uh, printed shirts. Have you heard of it? It's, it's not bad. And then we have our little factory store where we experiment with a lot of different styles as it's well. It's a big factory store now. It's large in size, but I wouldn't say it's a ton of volume or anything. But, you know, compared to some of the large, you know, the, the high volume stores we had at American Apparel. But it's, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty decent store, and we learn a lot from the customers. Um, and then, you know, we're, we're a little bit more careful what we're bringing into the Impredible line. There's a lot of inventory problems throughout the industry. Like, people are very um, careful on what they buy right now. If you remember when there were shortages of material, you could almost sell anything. Now you really, you really, <clears throat> people are <clears throat> buying what they, they're very intentional about their purchases. Um, in the imprintable t-shirt industry, I think everybody's keeping it close to the vest. Um, cash is really important. You don't want to have any surplus inventories. Um, I don't think the screen printers want that, and I don't think, well, nobody really wants it. So there's, I still think there's a lot of flushing out of old going on, and it's going to th- go on. But at some point in mid-2024, tw- or the end of 2024, there's gonna, I think there's going to be room for a lot of new products. A crop men's tea is definitely in. I remember on, um, I think sweatpants are still strong. Very strong category. We're seeing well, the, 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 no elastic at the bottom. But I have another theory. I was really working with the no elastic on the bottom for a while, but I felt they dragged on the floor, which isn't a problem for a lot of young adults. But I just didn't like going to the bathroom in them. You know what I mean? It's like, what is this? I don't want to mop up the toilet. Here. I don't want to think about yeah. this. So I came up with a theory is that the sweatpant should be longer and then you just fold the elastic up. So it gives the, it gives the impression of a straight leg, but it's, n- it's not. But I definitely think wider straight legs. Maybe you need a retractable one somehow that they come up with. <laughs> it's really tough though, because if it's a straight leg, it's gonna, cha- it's gonna matter. It's gonna matter if it's too short or too long. And we, you know, that's, the good thing about the elastic is it kind of forgives the length. But sweatpants are going, I mean, and, and garment dye is huge for us. I don't know how it is for everybody else. Yeah, that's huge. We, we think we're one of the strongest players in that field. I don't know, there, there, are, there is some competition, but right. we're emerging on that area. All right, so I know you have opinions about this. So how much are people caring about Made in USA? How much uh, about sustainability? Uh, those, that, I think those sustainability have- is suffering because of greenwashing and it's and 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 quite frankly a lot of it is greenwashing secondarily i think made in usa isn't that much of an edge but it's a, but but the products coming that we're making made in usa are better because they are made in usa because we're able to experiment we're able to get in get into the market with smaller runs see if it works we could quickly scale. We don't run out of stock very quickly. We check our stock levels, 365. We have very sophisticated um, reporting systems to see what fell out of stock or what is accelerating or what is. So we try to keep our stuff in stock. I, I don't know, those of you that buy from me, we really make an effort to make sure we, we, are, we ship, you know, we have the stuff that we keep things rolling. On, especially in our principal styles, 1801 and HF09GD and, 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 and HF07 and HF04GD, et cetera. Um, All right, more questions? Made in USA, like, it's, not, it's not about the theme of it, it's about what comes out, what the product is. And um, you know, we're very proud that we have the amount of people, we have one of the few Made in USA factories 
that competes with the offshore factories in terms of our size, the amount of machines, and the amount of operators we have. Because we believe in, in manufacturing it in the States for efficiency reasons, not for pity. It's not a pity party. We believe it's made, you know, there's a niche for us. And, you know, we, we think we can grow this business over the next 20 years to become one of the principal players, although it's not made in USA. And we pursue as much automation as we can. Um, but the sustainability thing I definitely think is, is a little bit of a scare, you know? Because I don't think pe people are talking about it, but what does it mean when they say it's recycled from bottles, for example? Is that better? Or would have the bottles been better to be become bottles again? You know, I I'm not sure. I'm aluminum t-shirts, man, that's the future. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think sustainability can be important. Our, most, our biggest claim to fame on sustainability is we're actually cutting garments. We actually cut garments from within the marker of other garments. Our shorts, for example, are often made of fabric that would have ordinarily gone to the landfill, but we recaptured them before they went to the landfill by cutting out the short from within the map the, 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 you know, the, 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 the cut plan. And so we've done some recapturing like that. I'm not saying that there is not some sustainable brands or products that are worthwhile. I just think that zone of the industry is suffering from a lot of um, confusion. Yeah. confusion or misinformation. Um, but but it's just still important. I, I don't want to discount it. I think the regenerative stuff, some of that's pretty good, right? Where they use uh, consumer post-consumer reweave it, right? I'm hearing about post-consumer recycling, but who knows, like, there's another thing we need to remember is, um, cotton is, our t-shirts 1801 are compostable. Like, you could come, it's, it's a cotton product, and, you know, let it rot in the, in the sandbox or whatever, and grow a carrot or, you know, I mean, it, <laughs> it's hard to say, it's hard to say, um, about all that stuff. There's really no science authority on a lot of it, but. It doesn't mean you should avoid it though. It's just, it, you, gotta, look, it, you, gotta dig it, you gotta dig in. You gotta dig in. You gotta dig into Made in USA. And offshore is not unethical or anything like that. You know, we, I, we, a I support free trade and open borders and all of it, so. I mean, do notice a lot of uh, USA the name or a flag and things that are not substantially made in the USA, yes? Yeah, that happens, you know, but I think the consumer can tell. I, I think the consumer can tell. Uh, got a question over here. Yeah, I was just wondering if you think uh, styles are recycling quicker than they used to. You know, maybe in 2010, I noticed a lot of like 80s style graphics. And now, you know, starting in 2020, you notice a lot of like Y2K style graphics. And uh, it just seems like the timeline between when things come back into style is getting shorter. I was wondering if you agree with that. Um, well, probably because of all the information that's out there, you know, on the internet and different themes and the amount of different trends that are going on that people have access to. That might be the case, but over time, I think it was Malcolm Gladwell said that who's a writer I, I've come to know over the years. 20 years is always more, 20 years old is always more cool than 10 years old. You know, something about 20 years, it's, it's it, the, the nostalgia sets in, number one. Number two, I think we're in a very free form time where you don't have to be, it's, we're not, the, the imposition of one code of conduct, style wise, is not as profound as it may have been in the past. But I, suit and ties coming back? I don't think suit and ties are coming back, unfortunately. No. I don't think so. No, that's, that's a comfort issue. All right, uh, yeah. Alex. Thanks. Uh, uh, hey, Dove, when are um, soft ring spun shirts going to be cool again? I think, well. That's your beefy tea, man. The, the, the beefy tea was ring spun. 
Do right? you mean ring spun combed or ring spun? Uh, ring, Are you spraying to ring spun combed or ring spun ring spun? I probably don't know the answer. What I mean is that it's soft. It feels very soft. I think when I soft touch it. probably. Soft makes sense if it's tighter. Yeah. Right, but if it's looser, the op the boardy open end feel is actually better. I think they're gonna they're probably more likely. Softer shirts are possibly gonna up come in a little bit as men's t-shirts get a little tighter. Yeah. There also is different soft. So one of the bigger companies did focus groups and all that information. Yeah. And they had like, like a thin ring spun shirt. Half the people think that is nice and smooth and soft and half people think it's a cheap ass shitty shirt. Totally, and then yeah, subjective. a thick shirt, half the people think that is rough, I don't like it, it's too heavy. Yep. Half the people think it's plush soft. Yep. So there's plush soft and slippery well, soft, I have another you theory. it's kind of different. I have right? another theory. Uh -oh. So you know when people say, oh, I like this one better? That's not always the one that I think they're gonna like. You know, it's like they're gonna like on the long term. So it's that their first impression, oh no, this one's better, this one's better. But sometimes it, it's, it, well, I think the best example of that is the touchscreen versus the keyboard, the Blackberry versus the iPhone. No, 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 they, everybody would have preferred the, the, the Blackberry keyboard initially. It took a while for people to adopt to the new one. But sometimes there's this special moment as a visionary uh, thinker, you say, no, no, they will prefer automatic transmission ultimately. <laughs> okay, they, you know, there, there's that, or they will prefer the touch screen. I felt that way about open end. I, everybody was soft, soft, soft. I said, you know what, there's something about how open end uh, um, is chalkier and this drier hand over a few washes, and as you bring it out of the of the laundry a few times. It, there's something special about open-end um, like open fleece and garment, or open-end t-shirt. Gar garment dyeing, I guess, in, enhances that process, right? It enhances the touch, yeah. But, but I think all of them are good. I think all, all, you know, there's, there's room for all these options. The way the imprintable t-shirt industry works in North America, and it's pretty unique to how we do it. They don't do it like this all over the world. We stock an item in this industry, and it's shown this is probably the best show of the year for this industry. And then all you guys go out and sell it. And it's made very efficiently, and it's, you know, it's stocked at Sandmar, or Gildan stocks it, or Los Angeles Apparel stocks it, you know what I mean? It's a stock business, so it's really risky, because. Someone's got to say, hey, guys, this is going to work. Give it a shot. But we work together as a community to sell garments, and the world watches. And they can't always get a hold of how, figure out how we do it. They don't have this industry in China. We, we lead this. In, somehow we do it in our own way. Maybe it's thanks to Impressions Magazine. They've been at it forever. Or it's thanks to everybody here. But it's, a, it's an interesting way. It's like, a, it's its own little niche of the garment industry, how we do things. And th then the screen printing machines, and there's not even that many brands of screen printing. It's a culture that we're a part of that I don't think the rest of the world really understands. Do you feel misunderstood too? <laughs> <laughs> All right, do we, maybe one more question. <clears throat> Run, Pam. <laughs> Good? Yeah, I think, I think just before the question, well, I'll just summarize a couple things. Hi. Um, I know you put a lot of uh, work and art into making the items that you create and you have and used to sell them blank. And I wondered, I know we're all here to print on stuff, but when you see your garments blank, is that how you love them the most? <laughs> um, that's a good question. Um, for the most part, I have to be honest, I love blank garments. I love blank garments, but I... But All right, we're done. <laughs> can, you, can you just calm down? Okay. But that's just my preference. But over the years, I've seen such phenomenal things that people have done with the garments and the, tech, the, the, the techniques 
that each printer brings to it. It's, 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 quite, it's been quite fascinating. It's amazing this industry is from Vermont, it's a, it's a, to, to, to San Diego, you know, I, it's across Canada and the United States and it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very interesting, passionate group of people. And just looking at everybody here, it's, it's a unique blend. It, it's a unique, it's, it's its own zone of people that really um, get off on the weights of t-shirts or which color or the ink or who would ever care about DTG or DTF and talk about it for hours? I mean, except if you're Me. in this, you, you, you're a weirdo, look at you. Um, but I do want to say- Fair just, enough. Yeah, just, I do want to say that I think shorter t-shirts for, for, for men, boxier, I haven't come up with all the solutions yet, but I think this is something we'll feed into. I think ring spun, I think softer, lighter weight shirts are gonna come up again. Um, I still think there's long, long, long run on the heavyweights. Um, and we have an awesome heavyweight that I'm very proud of. Um, and, we, you know, we just, it's, it, we'll see. And then the wider leg, the wider leg sweatpants are very important. Also, with, with or, without the elastic on the bottom is definitely an important theme, although it has its challenges. So those are just the concluding points. All right. But I uh, just want to thank everybody. Uh, it's been a long time we've been coming to these shows. Where's Lori Gons? She's a pioneer. She, <laughs> she retired. But, um, yeah, it's been just thinking now. These shows have been going on since... Um, since Dinosaurs Ruled the Earth. I, I think I was actually. 20 the impression shows were going. Who started them? 35 years ago or something. Yeah, it's a long time. So just keep on trucking and keep on printing shirts. All and, right. Um, how about a hand for Dove Charney? Thank you. All right, thanks for coming. Check out our YouTube channel. This will be up there in Kitchen. Check out our artificial intelligence uh, series as well. And thanks to the sponsors.